Namaste. So everybody's wound up about the U.S. elections. <laughs> but that's just a tiny thing, you know? I mean, at the most, it's going to have impact over the next four years or so. Big deal, right? We made a video not long ago called, How Far Out Is Your Horizon? And most people look at maybe the next couple of weeks, you know, with any amount of seriousness. But I'm in the process of going through the Lakshmi Tantra. And her horizon is like the whole existence of the universe and more, because she knows very well after this universe is finished and for after some time she's just going to create another one and so on. On and on and on. So what's the big deal, you know? What are the real issues? Well, I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of reading. And, you know, it's pretty much certain at this point that the climate change is going to be the biggest crisis ever. And, of course, linked with that is going to be economic collapse because the West, the whole industrialized global uh, whatever it is, <laughs> is completely overextended. Capital is overextended, currency is overextended, debt, trade balance, you name it. So 1929 was pretty bad, but what's coming is going to be even worse. And of course, that's going to lead to war like it always does. So the point is, foresight is 2020. I remember back in about 1967, 68, I was married to a half Navajo woman at the time. And we went to the reservation and I started getting into the whole Native American spiritual thing. And I remember sitting down with the elders one day and they're telling me, you know, this White man civilization, this industrial global civilization is, is not going to last too much longer. He said they're killing the earth at such a rate that she's going to start to hit back. This was 1967. And I asked them, well, how do you know this? And they said, oh, our grandfathers and grandmothers told us this. And how did they know it? Their grandmothers and grandfathers told them this. So the Native Americans have known for centuries what the outcome of the global industrial civilization, well, culture, uh, it's too nice. Civilization is too nice a name to give it. They've known about the outcome for centuries. Basically, ever since they saw the land being cleared and the factories and towns being built and the mines and everything, and of course, the terrible genocidal wars against the Indians, the exploitation of the blacks, they knew this was, this was doomed. Now, what is actually the global industrial culture? Well, it's a huge pyramid scheme to extract the wealth from poor people and concentrate it in the hands of the rich. That's really what it is. And it's been like that since the beginning and it's not going to change. They're going to fly this thing right into the ground. You know, in aviation, there's 
a, a type of accident, a type of crash called controlled flight into terrain. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen to this culture. That's what's going to happen to basically the whole planet. They're going to crash it. They're going to fly it right into the sheer cliff of environmental collapse. Because it can't be changed. Try to understand. A lot of people are, have some well-meaning, good intentions about changing this and changing that and, you know, reducing reliance on carbon fuels and all that good stuff. That's all nice, okay? But nobody is looking at the actual cause, which is the very structure of the culture that it's all based on. It's called resource extraction and rent seeking behavior. Let me go dig up the earth someplace and steal a bunch of minerals or whatever. And then let me make some useless stuff that really nobody needs and use advertising and economic tricks to sell it to them. And then when it breaks down or, or when it becomes uh, obsolete, sell them another one. Huh? I'll build me a skyscraper and charge people to live there. And the whole thing is completely against nature, against God, right? It ignores and actually contradicts everything in the scriptures all the scriptures of every religion in the whole world, yet it goes on. Why don't they do anything? Why don't they change? Well, there are two answers. One is they don't know how. They don't know how to go back to a sustainable lifestyle. And the second answer is they're demons. <laughs> their basic character, their basic nature is against God, against truth, against goodness, against justice, against everything that's right and pure and good. They're evil. They're demons. And they have got control of the planet from the good people by various tricks. Huh? Maybe they got some boon from Lord Shiva or something. Who knows? Somehow or other, these rascals are in charge of the whole planet. And you can't get rid of them because how are you going to do it? All the governments are, being, are bought by them. All the armed forces are being paid by them. All the weapons are ultimately controlled by them. All the economic systems are bought and sold by them. The currencies, the banks. So it's just not possible, you know, it's not going to happen. You might as well just understand it's not going to happen. And probably we're going to go through some tremendous convulsion of a combination of economic collapse and war and environmental devastation over the next, I don't know, couple hundred years. See, but most people <laughs> at most are thinking about this lifetime, the next, you know, X number of years. I'm very fortunate because I have known since about 1980, no, even before that, 76 or so, I've known how long I'm going to live. I've known how I'm going to die. And even where and under what circumstances. I had the, the good fortune to uh, work with a very, very good astrologer as his assistant, and I learned a great deal. So, I'm at peace with that, I know, you know. 
what's going to happen. And the more that I investigate in astrology, the clearer it is. But beyond that, I know where I'm going in the next life. Why? Because I'm going into the dream that I've made. This is bhakti. This is tantra. See, this is the actual yoga that in karma yoga, you accumulate pious karma, good fortune, good luck, so that you can pretty much do whatever you want in this life. And I've done <laughs> pretty much whatever I wanted to in this life. I've been very fortunate. But then in the stage of bhakti, you find your Ishta Devata, you find your perfect Lord, your perfect object of love, your perfect protector. And you take shelter of that Ishta Devata and worship him or her until your world within, huh? world of dreams, is exactly what you want. It's exactly the kind of pastime, the kind of existence that pleases you according to your particular individual values. See, this is why religion by the book is always wrong. It has to be creative. It has to be individual. It has to be an innovation. It has to be unique and personal. No two people have the same dream. Now, I'm not talking about a, a dream that you can have in this world, like being a pilot or a musician or something like that. You know, those are easy. Anybody can do that. I'm talking about the dreams that are out of this world. <laughs> the impossible dreams that I'm going to go to this other world where things are different, where everybody is enlightened, where there is a, a sovereign Lord or God or goddess in control and unqualified people can't come in. And so there's only enlightened people, there's only kind and loving people, people who believe in goodness and truth and justice. See? And love. Because in a place like that where you can trust other people to do the right thing, <clears throat> to do what they say they're going to do, and what they say is really what they mean, in that environment you can have love. You can't have love on this planet. It's too far gone. It's too degraded. Huh? Even very qualified people, like movie stars and musicians and great politicians and rich people, they have terrible trouble with their spouses, their significant others or whatever. They suffer so much so that they have to take shelter of drugs and even suicide. So what is the point? of even trying to have a love relationship in this world. There's no point in it. You're going to suffer. It's probably going to fail. And it's going to be ugly. It's going to be a big mess. So, you know, save the time and save the heartaches and just throw yourself full on into sadhana and create your inner world and use mantras and other kind of magical techniques to make it real and make it happen. And when you have to leave this world, you can say, you know, sayonara. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen, you know, without any attachment, without any regrets. 
and go to the world of your dreams to live forever. Aum Tatsa Aum Shakti Aum.